Hello, science fiction fans and uh, and the merely curious. Welcome to the second in my occasional series on my favourite science fiction short stories. Today I'd like to talk about the story It's a Good Life by Jerome Bixby. First published in 1953, this is in my humble opinion one of the seminal works of science fiction. Uh, short story from a short story perspective and one that has had an enormous influence not least because of its use in a televised adaptation which for me helped promote taking science fiction seriously on the small screen and it's also a genuinely chilling tale which blurs the boundary between science fiction and horror and you can see the echoes of this story in the work of many authors over the years since, uh, Stephen King, Peter Straub and many others uh, have similar uh, themes and concepts and feelings in uh, their work. Uh, on a personal level, this story has stuck firmly in my mind since reading it in some long-forgotten short story anthology back in the 1970s. I must have read and forgotten thousands of short stories over the years, but I can never forget this one. Now, Jerome Bixby was an American author who lived between 1923 and 1998. He is perhaps most well-known for his work on four episodes of the original Star Trek, in particular the legendary Mirror Mirror episode. He also co-wrote the original story for Fantastic Voyage, which is one of my favourite movies of all time, as well as the screenplay for It, the Terror from Beyond Space. Now, It's a Good Life is on the surface a story about a placid Midwest small town community and the Fremont family, with little three-year-old Anthony Fremont the focus. But little Anthony is far from normal and has god-tier mental powers which terrorise the town. His powers were there at birth and the story hints at him not being wholly human. In fact, he killed the obstetrician who delivered him at birth and simultaneously transported this Ohio town somewhere out of the planet Earth. Or perhaps he destroyed Earth, except for the town. No one really knows. Perhaps they are no longer even in the real universe. Interestingly, Anthony is not evil or not uh, maliciously evil as such, he's a three-year-old boy with all the emotional immaturity that implies. But his ability to read minds means everyone must pretend that everything is always well, even when he destroys their crops or turns turns someone into a monster and then consigns them to a grave in a nearby cornfield. So to make Anthony unhappy is the worst thing that can happen. Even when he thinks he's being nice, terrible things can happen. The sense of claustrophobic terror of the townspeople, including Anthony's family, is palpable and genuinely chilling. No No matter what happens, they must maintain the facade to Anthony that it's always a good day. So I would recommend thoroughly you find a copy of this story and read it. It's a real treat. Uh, It was famously adapted for a 1961 episode of The Twilight Zone and one of the best ever episodes of that show, in my humble opinion. And it showed just how well serious science fiction could be treated in the television milieu. And a different version, although less satisfying in my opinion, also turned up in the 1983 Twilight Zone movie. Anyway, thanks for listening to this uh, little foray into science fiction short stories. Um, I will be back soon with more content. If you enjoyed this, please click like and subscribe. And in the meantime, stay well and remember to look to the future.